Natalie Sidesurf here of Sidesurf Cake Studio, and I'm gonna show you how I made a realistic Gary the Snail Cake from SpongeBob. I wanted to make a snail cake. I like the idea of the shell and the textures and the shininess, but I didn't want just a regular old snail, so I started thinking, what is a really popular snail? And I thought of Gary. So I made the snail realistic, but then I added the colors of Gary. So it's kind of like a realistic take on Gary. I recommend subscribing to our channel below if you like cake videos, because we put out new ones every Monday, just like this guy. So let's get started. What do you do with cake scraps? You make cake clay. <laughs> so I always have cake scraps left over from my sculpted cakes. So a great way to utilize those scraps is by making cake clay, which is the same stuff that cake balls are made of. It's just crushed up cake with either buttercream or in this case, chocolate ganache. The ratio is going to differ depending on how moist your cake is. So I recommend adding a tiny bit of either buttercream or ganache at a time until it creates a nice packing texture that keeps its shape. I rolled the cake clay into an egg shape and then I covered it in modeling chocolate, keeping it super simple. Then you just work the chocolate over the cake and you pinch the edges and then you can trim those edges away and then blend them out. That's what's so great about modeling chocolate. It's a lot like clay in that you can blend the seams very easily. And there we go. Now it's time to start sculpting. I'm going to use some sculpting tools to create the spiral shape of the shell. So I'm gonna go around and I even went in and kind of I was drawing out where I want those lines to go. It's nice to have a little guide. Then I go in and I sculpt in a little bit deeper and deeper as I go. You can see I'm using the side of my tool a lot. So I'm not just stabbing into the chocolate with the pointed end, but I'm using the flat side of it. And that helps to raise that chocolate up and give that spiral shape. Then I defined it a little bit more and softened it. If you put gloves on, it's really easy to smooth out modeling chocolate. Then I went in and added this little arc at the front with a little indentation and a, a bit of a lip. And that's where the snail's body is going to come out. You could actually keep the shell like this, um, but I wanted to add some texture. So I went in and added some deep lines and then some nice light soft lines. I started with the deep lines. So I'm going in and having those lines radiate out from the center of the shell. Now that I have the deep lines, I went in with a more tapered pointed tool and I added some soft marks. And again, it's just a bunch of lines radiating out from the center. Some deep and some more shallow. What's cool about this is when you go to paint, all of the food color is going to seep into all those cracks and it looks really cool. I love adding texture. Next, I rolled up a hot dog <laughs> shaped piece of modeling chocolate and that is going to be the snail's body. So I pinched the top and then I added a little lip around the edges. So you can actually pick the modeling chocolate up and pinch those edges to create a bit of a fin. And you're gonna do that on both sides and around the front. Don't pinch it too much because if it's too thin, it'll start to kind of just fall over. It needs to be thick enough to hold its shape. Then I took a blade and I trimmed away the chocolate so that it fits in the shell perfectly. I added a little bit of texture. The snail's body is kind of wrinkly with some horizontal lines. I also added two little short tentacles in the front with a ball tool. So for the tail, it's very similar. I have my modeling chocolates. I pinch the top, I trim it away, and I place it underneath the shell. 
I ended up covering a toothpick with modeling chocolate and then adding a yellow modeling chocolate eye. If you have fondant or gum paste, you could just roll that out without using a toothpick and it'll hold its shape. It just so happens to be that I only had modeling chocolate and modeling chocolate's a little too soft to hold its shape. So you have to give it some structure, something to hold on to, which is why I used a toothpick. And I went in and defined those wrinkles just a little bit more one last time before I paint. So I use gel food color and extract. This is almond extract. And I went in kind of like watercolor and I painted in all the dark areas and then it radiates out into a lighter pink. So it has a bit of a gradient. So it's nice and dark in the creases and light as it goes out. You can even wet a paper towel and wipe some of it away and it'll leave these really cool highlights. Gary has some blue spots on his shell. So I just went in again with gel food color and almond extract and I added the spots. His body is blue. So I added blue on the top and then around the fin at the bottom that is going to be yellow. You can absolutely use water instead of an extract. Um, it's a little bit harder to work with when you use water because you are painting on chocolate and water will cause it to beat up. But as that water evaporates, it will work. It'll start to evaporate. You'll be able to spread the food color on. So you can use water if you prefer. I wanted the eyes to be a little larger, a little bit more cartoony. Uh, so I added a little bit more of a yellow modeling chocolate. Then he's got his red irises. Those are also with modeling chocolate. Super tiny. <laughs> and then I painted in a black little pupil. Gotta get yourself a fine, tiny, thin brush. So to make him look shiny, I just covered him in piping gel. You want to make sure that the food color is completely dry before you add the piping gel or it'll start to mix in. And there you have it, a realistic Gary cake from SpongeBob. Now it's time to cut Gary. My favorite part about making cakes is cutting them. So let's do it.